So what's going to happen if they ask you to change your attitude, mate? How are you going to handle that one? Oh, well, if they tell me that I've got to change my attitude and life as we know it's come to an end, I'll just have to tell them how I feel. He just grunts at me. We don't really have a relationship. What are you doing tonight? None of your business. I don't really listen, I don't really talk to her. I can't have a conversation with her, she's always whinging. Probably what our biggest gripe is, that he's basically just lazy. My stepdad said, yeah, well, you can leave school if you get a job, and I didn't like that. Yeah, I just had better things to do. <laughs> he's more concerned about, you know, sort of what part he's on tonight. God knows what he gets up to. <laughs> Best sound in the world. I'm awake most nights thinking about where he is, what he's up to. Jolts your legs! Zane, time to get up, mate. Oh. It's time to get up. Why? You shouldn't have got home so late Why? last night. Usually he sleeps all day. All day. Look, there's no reason for me to be out of bed. I should be able to sleep. I thought you said you were going to be home at 9 o'clock. Yeah, I was. So what time did you get home? I don't know. Well, it was after 2. It's not good enough, mate. We couldn't sleep last night. It's not worry. Just it gets to us, you know, when we see that, you know, the level of, of zero respect that, you know, he appears to have for, for both of us. It's just wrecking our family and I just want him to wake up to himself. But I know they should just accept me for who I am as, like, everyone should. It's just frustration, he just doesn't listen. <laughs> I'm a teenager, so that's my excuse. You've got everything? Yep. Got your passport? Yep. Zane will be travelling with 17-year-old Memphis from Harvey Bay in Queensland. They're very strict over there. I heard about this already. Memphis dropped out of school too and now just lives. I like to go out and have fun and do what I want. <laughs> I don't like rules. I don't like being told what to do. She doesn't believe in any boundaries. She just thinks that she should be able to do what she wants whenever she wants. She can't control me, so I always win. If I'm going to do something, it doesn't matter what she says, I'm still going to do it. So where'd you go and find out to a party? What is it to you? Well, the deal is, remember... There is no deal, Mum. Well, there should be a deal. If you're not coming well, home, no you need to tell me you're not coming home. Why? Well, because... It's pretty obvious if I'm not home that I'm not coming home. When I'm out with my friends, we usually just get drunk, go crazy, do whatever we want. <laughs> she was at a party and she was jumping on a police car. When I was younger, I was really into sport. And then when I moved to Harvey Bay and I got about 12 or 13, then I just stopped doing everything. I think, looking back, that it probably had something to do with um, the separation from her father. And you know, I think that she blames me. Memphis is strong-willed, <laughs> independent. She's always been her, her own person. In a way, I suppose I've sort of given, given up a little bit. Despite all the arguments, Daddy's little girl can still manage a hug for Mum. See you later. Zane, on the other hand, doesn't have a lot of love for anyone in his family. Can I get a kiss? Kiss? Yeah. Kiss? Kiss? Yes. Oh, Shayla. From now on, our rebellious teens only have each other to lean on. Oh, I'm saying. <laughs> and they're about to be thrown into one of the strictest societies in the world, Singapore. Zane and Memphis won't know what's hit them when they move in with the Chua family. I believe in authoritative parenting. For me, it's a no means a no. That's it. Mum, Ian, is a parenting coach, while Dad, Meng, works for a multinational bank. Their daughters, Essa and Ada, are straight-A students. Um, my sister finished here, so she's won a lot of awards. I started playing when I was four. Now I'm a national player. My parents have quite high expectations of my performance in school. They um, expect me to be above average. Their major role is in performing the job of being a student. And that job is performed at the most prestigious school in Singapore. 
Raffles Institution Junior College only accepts the top 3% of students in the country. Normally they'll spend like two to three hours each day to try to finish their homework. When um, the school gets tough or exams are coming, I'll probably stay up until 2, 3 a.m. just to finish it. The Chua girls must eat dinner with their parents every night. Sleepovers and boyfriends are forbidden. For our family, we really believe that there should not be premarital sex. Even things like kissing or making out in public are already an issue in my school. Smoking, drinking, that's a big no-no. And the consequences are very severe. As parents, we want to be the one that plays the biggest role in parenting our own children. I need a diary. <laughs> yeah, I had a couple of drinks on the airplane. Yeah, they asked if I was 18. I said I was 19, but I'm 16, so that's OK. Zane and Memphis aren't just facing a strict family. In Singapore, there are hefty fines for spitting, vandals are caned, and taking drugs can mean jail or even the death penalty. Hope the family's not real, real strict, and hope the kids aren't like weird. Uh, if they're strict, they'll probably just disobey their rules. Maybe they tell them they need to calm down a bit. We will be really, really excited to see what they look like and really like to see how they re respond to the little surprises we have prepared for them. Ow. Hi, welcome to Singapore. Hi. And you must be Memphis. Yep. Welcome. And you must be Zane. Like most Singaporean families, the Chuas live in a high-rise apartment building. Okay. Are you able to manage that? Up? Yeah. Hi, I'm Zane. Hi, Rita. Yeah, I'm, and I'm Zane. Uh, I'm Zane. <laughs> and this is that for you. you. Oh, thank you. That's good. So do you know what they are? <laughs> yeah, how, what are they called again? Care Bears? Yeah. yeah. And we really care about you and the special mascot for this trip. I was a little surprised by how Zane looked. I think it's going to be tough for him to get into um, the school. Uh, this is your room. Another teddy bear. Got a new bedroom. It's all right. It's a wall, so I can't really punch any holes in the wall, which is good. I wasn't gonna, but makes it easier. Um, this will be where you're sleeping. Um, I was quite shocked when I saw um, the piercing on Memphis here. When I get yeah, I found her dress quite short and um, a bit low. The mum and the dad seem nice. Just wait till we get to read the little rules book thing. <laughs> Well, in this family, we have some rules so that we know what we will do for one another. One of them is really about greetings. So you address us as Uncle Meng and Auntie Yen, right? So we don't go by first name. And each time when uh, you step into the house, we expect like Ada and Nessa to say, Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. So we like you to do that too. You will be going to school. And you're going to go to the Raffles Institution Junior College. I hate school. Probably the worst thing she did at school was when she picked up a chair and threw it in the classroom, yeah. Never really did like school. By teacher's advice, they sort of said maybe he should leave. I didn't really learn much. Memphis, you will have to tie your hair up. So, but you will re need to remove anything else that is on your face. No jewellery is allowed. For Zane, they will need you to have your hair cut to uh, a little shorter, just showing your ears, and not to wax your hair. Is that all right with you? Um, no. That's not all right with you? Do I have to do that? Yeah, you have to do that in order to get into the school. I don't know. We really need you to cooperate with that. The hair has to be something like mine. I'll look ridiculous if I cut it off. Ridiculous or not, the Chuas are insisting Zane gets a haircut immediately. 
The school rules state, hair must not touch the collar, it must not touch the ears, and it must be above the eyebrows. And fancy hairstyles are strictly forbidden. Uh, wow, this is nothing. I mean, I, I will have my whole uh, head have a cool cut. This is just a little trim. Oh, well, I know. I'd rather not go to school than have my hair cut. Back home, Memphis isn't ready to play by the rules either. The stalls are really, really loud. It makes like this big quaking noise, so. <laughs> If Memphis wants to find out what the trial's punishments are like, she's going the right way about it. 6 a.m. in Singapore. And our high school dropouts are fast finding out what it means to live with strict parents. Zane, 6 o'clock. In the Chua family, school attendance is non-negotiable. And school starts at 7.40 sharp. Memphis, it's time to get up. Tired, it's so early, it's dark outside. Who wakes up this early? Then come on, everyone's waiting for you. Ada's gonna be punished if she goes to school late, so you gotta help her with that. Zane's real parents lose this battle all the time. But our strict mum, Ian, is refusing to give in. I'm just gonna be standing here because you gotta get up. Because if you're late, Ada's gonna be late and she's gonna get the big trouble. Come on. Get up. If not, I'm going to get help to drag you off bed. Yeah, well done, okay. I'm usually getting home about now. I'm going to sleep, but I'm not, I'm getting up. We expect them to be responsible students because that's their major role at this stage of life. Ma'am, just make sure that you do not wear any makeup. No makeup is allowed in school. She's had no makeup. I don't want to take it off. I feel bad without it. No makeup, no jewelry. And Zane's still struggling with that new neat hairdo. Zane managed to compromise on the haircut. Like we wouldn't cut his sides, but we would cut his back. It's a bit of a departure from his preferred look. Definitely not appropriate for school. I'm pretty ridiculous. I don't think they'll let me in school because I look ridiculous. This is a brand new comb for you, so it's going to stay with you for the week and just, you've got to comb it really, really flat. Just have it all flat and put the wax down. So nothing should be sticking out in different directions. You've got to tuck your shirt in. Yeah, no, I don't like life here at all. I've been here for a day and I don't like it. Hope I don't see any girls down the street. I'll run off an embarrassment, I think. Tidy hair or not, something tells me Zane would always stand out at this school. 99% of these teenagers will go on to university. Zane and Memphis, however, dropped out before finishing high school. Based on justice and equality, so as to achieve happiness, prosperity and progress for our nation. I'm still feeling pretty talky. Um, no, no. I hate school, I want to go. Yeah, I don't like school, but I don't want to. That's probably not a chance I'll enjoy it. Oh, it's hot, it's not really that's it. And then you pull it by warming with water. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I didn't learn anything. I learned that if I sleep on my arm like that, I get a sore arm. It's boring. I hate classes because we can't do anything, so we just go to sleep. There's too many people. I can't understand anything they say. And it's just shit altogether. The school bell doesn't ring until 3.45, but halfway through the day, and our rebellious teenagers have well and truly had enough. 
We really can't skip past. We have to go past. We'll all get in trouble. Can we go look around there? No. You can go to class. No, no, I no. Please, no. That this, fun. Please. I know, I know it's going to be very boring. It's very boring for us too, but, but we don't have a choice. But we do. At school, Zane and Memphis are Ada's responsibility. I don't want to go to school. And if the Aussie teens walk out, Ada will be in big trouble. We'll just say it was our fault. It's got nothing to do with you. They don't care. But it's our body. We can do what we want. But someone has to be answerable, and you guys are not answerable, so I have to be answerable. Please, I don't want to go. Zane, 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 where's Zane going? Zane, Zane. I'm feeling a bit toe for Ada, actually. Is she running after us? Wait, she's coming. Stop running, guys. Stop running. Memphis, stop running. OK, you know what? My parents are responsible for you. So you guys can go away without my parents knowing where you are. Bus, bus, Memphis. bus. Let's go. Memphis, please do not go on I the bus. I just want to get on the bus. It'll be fun. Can you, you please, can go back in Can you please help me? Go I, know, I know this is school. difficult. I know this okay. is something you don't want to do. But school. the fact that you're here in Singapore, yeah, no, we you want to be a look around, that's why we're going to get on the bus. No, I'll, I'll be here to look around, OK? No, it'll be fine by ourselves. No. I think so. I don't know where we're going. Hello, Mum, are you here? Ada's now desperate where are you? and calling Mum for backup. Oh, we'll just get off Half an hour. Can you please, can you please get on another bus? Don't <laughs> <laughs> do that. They cost money. You're scared. <laughs> we just want to go. No. It'll be all good. <laughs> we'll call you tonight. Please let us go. Our strict mother is on the way. The question is, can she get here before the teens take off? I'll give you money. Just get it. Can you please go to Orchard Street, Mom? They're both gone. Yeah, yeah, I can't do anything. They're not listening to me. Yeah, we've got to school again. Azkaban prison crossing, <laughs> crossing Hogwarts. <laughs> so, Tens of thousands of Aussie teenagers wag school every day. But in the Chua family, this behaviour is unthinkable. And Ada's devastated. I guess I've done my best. I mean, I've only known them for two days. Nothing much I can do. Yeah. I feel sorry for her, but still don't want to go back to school. Yep. She looks like she's about to cry. It's probably the most hectic thing that's ever happened in her life. I'm going to go back for my lessons because I have SMD and I have duties. So, yeah, I'll just go back. Yeah. Ada knows there will be consequences, not just for Zane and Memphis, but for her too. Zane and Memphis, on the other hand, are living without a care in the world, like they always do. All this fun is worth the price. <laughs> Memphis? Hi, do you know who this is? Auntie Ian is fuming. Because they have breached the rules of respect, they will not be allowed into the house until they're settled that they're going to be willing to respect us and build this relationship again. So I need to make them, meet them at a neutral place, and if they do not agree, well, we just have to send them home and I'm going to tell them right that uh, that's what it's all about because they have breached the rule and we can't continue this relationship if rules are broken. This time, the teens are doing as they're told. Uh, and mom's going to yell at us. Hi. 
I propose. What? I propose. Why? I propose that. We said we are together. We are trying to do things together, and you. I'm trying yeah, to work. Yeah, we did together. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, as a family, if you want to be a part of my family, you really he have to give there. us a respect. Don't, don't you ever get like a long time or anything? And this is about respect because What's... you should tell me where you're going. Yeah, but we could tell you. No, I am going to stop this now. But I want to know if you want to continue staying in my place. Are you ready to respect what I say? Yeah, but I don't want to go to school. Just yeah. answer me. I just want to know: Are you willing to obey the house rules and to give me the respect? Maybe. No, maybe it's not going to answer. I'm telling you that. So I'm going to ask you Zane first. I'm going to ask Matthews again. Can I hear a yes? Yes. All right. Yeah. Matthews, I need the answer. Are you going to obey the house rules? Yeah, the house rules. Okay. And are you going to give me the respect for a garden? Yep. Good. All right. So looking at how the kids are responding to the school, I don't think it's a good idea for them to get back to school. Right, it's not going to be um, a good experience for them, and neither is it going to be a good experience for the school. So I kind of made up my mind they're go not going back to school anymore. Both teens are now under lock and key, and grounded from going anywhere. Locked in. If it wasn't for these walls. Yeah, I did feel like I let her down, but like, she's just got to understand that I know it's different over here and I just wouldn't be able to get used to it. Like, it's not fun, not a fun place, not a fun culture. It's a sign of disrespect, a sign of defiance, it's a sign of I couldn't care. It's not right. They've put shame on the family and left the whole household feeling tense. But instead of feeling guilty, Memphis is about to make the situation even worse. We're waiting for everyone to go to bed because we're attempting to, like, have some fun. All we really have to do is figure out which key opens which door to the front door and then we're good to roll. Thing is, the house keys are kept in Auntie Anne's bedroom. And she's just been caught. No, you really shouldn't be getting in my room and touching my things. You didn't get my permission. Even when I want you, there are plenty of tissue in the toilet, there are plenty of tissue outside. But I was, I just seen the door open, I was just sitting no. there. No. Okay, I'm gonna check you. Alright? Alright, I think you have really done something that really breached my trust. Okay? It was like wide open. And I just It doesn't mean that you can get in and touch my things. Okay. I saw you touching my things. What? And I'm not gonna to talk to you anymore because I need to calm down. I'm really frustrated with what you've done. Are you kidding? I'm not gonna to talk to you yeah, because you I am down. really frustrated. Yeah. So I'm not gonna to talk to you now because I need I to calm down. I don't wanna talk to you anyway. Right. That's great. No, I to eat. I have no idea what she's doing, but I'm really frustrated by what she's done. So, but um, right now I need to calm down as I shared with her and I like to take time to calm down and think of what I want to do first. When our strict Singaporean parents need to punish one of their children, they always sleep on it first. That's their policy. But overnight, Memphis has done some thinking too. Sorry for taking the key last night. So where did you get this from? You make me so angry. And where did you get this from? Um, I was sitting on the table. On my room table? Yep. Okay, I'm glad you know that you're sorry. I, I, I wanted to be very nice to you guys. I brought you guys for lunch, and I was going to bring you shopping today, right? Remember? Yeah. And Adrian has arranged to have dinner out with her friends, with the two of you. And the plan was to let you guys out tonight with her and have a great time, all right? Mm -hmm. But because of what you did last night, I'm not sure if you know how to make the right decision about what is good for you. In fact, I've just asked her to cancel the dinner, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm glad that she has realized that there are the consequences. I had a good intention to make it a fun day for them, but um, she has spoiled it all. And she has not only spoiled it for herself, she has spoiled it for Zane, and she has spoiled the night out for Ada as well. True to her word, Ian's not sending our teens back to school. But that doesn't mean a day of play. Guys, we're heading to this place where we will collect our food 
could be distributed to all folks. The teens will volunteer their time at Meals on Wheels. We don't actually have to do it, do we? Mm, yeah, you have to. We're Think not. about all the fun stuff you could be doing instead of volunteering. It's all about karma, really. It's just karma. Here we are. Holy gosh. I always encourage young people to do volunteer work. I mean, it's a good thing to do. As soon as you come to reach out to these so-called less uh, fortunate people in the society, you put life in perspective. We are going to 174. Yeah. Do you do charity work like in Australia, like volunteer and stuff? No, no one does this in Australia. <laughs> this is weird. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine, thank you. Very That's good. good. For Zane and Memphis, this is a first. I'm sick of this already. But the Chuas volunteer twice a month as a family. Do they give me money? They're probably very lazy, maybe, like, so they don't bother going to help other people. This is probably a very good chance for them to see like what volunteers do. It's just to care for the community. How you going, buddy? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, that's good stuff. He's from Australia. Australia. He's a very young man. Young man. 16 years old. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, thank you. Slim, bye bye. Yeah. Hopefully, Memphis and uh, Zai will learn something from here and say that, yeah, it's a good thing to do. How are you? And sure enough, so far, so good. this next meal drop off does make both the teens stop and think. Did you go to World War II? This 91-year-old was a prisoner of war during World War II. Do you remember those days? Those hard days? I remember it. Wow, you're a hero. It felt good to give him food because he's hungry and he's old and alone and he lives by himself and it would be sad to be like that. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be to help them out. You actually do feel like you really are helping them. Finally, there's a message getting through to our teens. But it's a message from home that'll really get them thinking about their own actions. Dear Memphis, I am writing this letter to you to let you know how much your family is missing you. You are my firstborn child, Memphis. <laughs> this is from my mum. I don't want to read this. I don't want to read it. You were my firstborn child, Memphis, and you've always been very special to your father and I. We both love you so very much. Even when you were little, we could always rely and trust you to help with your younger brothers and sister. You were so very responsible and made sensible decisions. I know the past six years have been difficult for you, Memphis. Memphis, when your father and I separated. No one was to blame, though. Memphis. Um, as both your father and I have grown apart and we were heading down different paths, I didn't realise how much this would hurt you. And I'm very sorry that you had to. Such a huge emotional burden alone. I am hoping that this time away from your family will open your heart to me and others in your life. And remember, Memphis, that the doors we open and close each day decide the lives we live. I love you, Memphis. Always your mum. I don't really think my mum's a bad person. I just don't always get along with her. Um, I should probably try and be more patient with her and not get angry so easily. I miss my dad. <laughs> it was really hard because um, I was used to always having him around and then he was just gone. And like, because we moved to a new town and stuff, I didn't really have any friends like that I knew that were like really close to me. So it was hard for me like because everything was so new and I just, didn't know what to do. <laughs> 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 Zane and Memphis, 
Zane's mum, Rachel, has some things she wants to say too. Hi Zane, I hope that the flight went well and that you are at least settled into the family. While you have been away, it has given me the chance to reflect on a lot of things. Specifically, specifically our, our relationship. relationship. I think that maybe I don't spend enough time with you, especially of late. If that's the case, I am sorry. Sometimes I doubt my abilities as a mother and wonder is there anything else I could have done differently. I don't think you realise that I cry often, that we aren't getting along. We always seem to be fighting. Um, yeah, she wants to, like, communicate more, which is hard because she's got two kids and a husband and I've got, like, my own little life, so... Like, we just, like, slowly grew apart. Yeah, I, I miss me mum at the moment, like... It's good that I've got a mum and that I've got a family who cares about me. No, it wouldn't be hard to make a few changes and make her happier. Um, no, that wouldn't be hard. But right now, it's the weekend. And in this Singapore household, that means family time. Mum, Dad and all the teens will spend the day together. Having fun time is really important to our family. It is the way in which we build our memories and share with each other that we love each other and we just want to have fun together. Well, it's 8.15 and to my pleasant surprise, he has gotten up and he's right now in the shower without me having to do anything to wake him up. And I think that's a great achievement uh, that we've come so far with him. Burnouts, Uncle Man. Sorry? Burnouts. Crispy bean cup. You try a small one. I don't know. You can try it. Good, right? Thank you. have become more open to talking to us. So I guess overall, um, they've come to adjust to our family and try to fit in. Yeah. I do think Ada and Essa like genuinely enjoy being with their parents all the time and like spending heaps of time with them. They look like they are always happy. <laughs> yep, Memphis could learn a lot from Essa and Ada. And maybe, just maybe, she's learned something already. Did you get in trouble for not going to that lesson at school the other day? Oh, my teacher hasn't spoken to me yet. Because we're really sorry for like running away. We, ne we didn't want you to get in trouble, but <laughs> we just funny. couldn't handle school anymore. Yeah, I understand. My teacher kind of asked me why. I said, I'll explain to her on Tuesday. So <laughs> you can just blame it on Tuesday. us because we don't want you to get in trouble. Because we want you to go to your good university and be smart and stuff. <laughs> I really appreciate my friends coming to, to say sorry, even though to me it wasn't, it wasn't essential to whether I respected her as a person or not. Yeah, and um, it, was, it was very sweet of her and um, I'm very, I'm very honoured that she did that. Very soon both teens will be back with their own families, hopefully with a few life lessons under their belt. I respect that Ada's like, she wants to get somewhere in life, like, she wants to be something, like, she wants to go to university and that. When I compare our lives, yeah, I feel a bit outdone. I don't know. It makes me think that I should probably do something with my life. Over the last week, I'd say that I have grown up a little bit, learning to respect people and the things that they do. So, yeah, 
but we have to make a few changes when I get home. Have a good flight and I'll see you in Australia. I didn't really ever believe that people actually lived like this, with like so much importance like put on school and everything. Like at the start I just thought everyone lived like I do. <laughs> Hey guys, are you all ready? During this short time, I really see hope because I see them trying to do something better than what they normally do. So this is for? Getting up. We're having a great time, remember? Oh. <laughs> Any words for them? Yeah, I'm going to miss you guys too. You guys have been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Miss you too. <laughs> yeah, over the last week I got to know Ada pretty well. She's a really nice girl and if I lived in Singapore, I'd want to be her friend. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a very enriching experience for us, uh, supporting those two teenagers to try to just become better adults as they grow in their years. Yeah, thank you. Come on, Zane. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, see you later. Yeah, thanks everything. Right. See you in Australia. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, before I came here, my life wasn't looking too good. But um, after coming here and having a new experience, I realised that I do need to get a job or else I'm just going to not be anything. It was hard at first. But getting to know them and seeing what they're like as a family, they're actually pretty nice and it's been fun. I would have liked Memphis to think about the way that, she, that we interact, um, the way that she speaks to me, just showing a bit more respect. Over the last week, I think I've grown a little bit in realising um, that maybe how I treat my family isn't the right way to do it. <laughs> how are you going? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where'd you go? Had fun. <laughs> Have a good time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they have real strict rules and they go to school a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Never even said a swear word in their life. Oh. It's crazy over there. Do you maybe understand how I've been feeling sometimes? Yeah. So now that you understand, is there going to be any changes, do you think, that are between us? I'll try. You're going to try? Yeah. I don't think people can change overnight, so I think that's something that she's going to have to uh, work on over a period of time. Hey, Dad, it's Ma'am. I'm just calling to tell you that I'm home. Give me a call when you get this message. Love you, bye. Oh, I'm actually quite excited about him coming home. I've really missed him, so yeah, I'm looking forward to him coming home. Even if he changes a little bit, I think it'll make a lot of difference to the family. Even if it is just getting up out of bed, you know, without being told too many times. Yeah, I'm going to try and change the things that my stepdad and my mum were unhappy about. And um, I should probably be playing with the kids more so they can look up to their big brother. Come on, mate. How are you going? Yeah. All right? Yeah. How'd you go? Yeah, I went out. Oh, look. <laughs> All right. How you going? Good. Good. <laughs> and what was the family like? Um, they were real nice. The girls there, they get up at 6 in the morning and then they study and then they go to school. Because they want to get ahead and go, like, they want to go to a good university. And that's, like, that's, I don't know, that's what everyone does there. So maybe I should make more of an effort. You're going to get a job now? You yeah, said? yeah. Yeah? But no, it was a good experience over there, yeah. Just hope he, he's realised that we're not that bad and we, all we want's the best for him. Mum? Yeah. I love you. Huh? I love you. You love me? Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I love you too. <laughs>